ya Watching them movies and talking about them too We got so many favorites and they're waiting here for you We got movies for kids, but don't be mad Because we also got the movies meant, 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 meant for mommies and dads Come on to Cinemassacre Video Hey Tony, Happy New Year! Do you have any special New Year's resolutions? I do! I plan on getting six-pack abs by 2020! While I believe in you, Tony, that's a big order. But I think Skillshare can get you on the right path. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in health, art, design, business, and more. Oh, I know. I was gifted a Skillshare Premium Membership for Life Day. Now I have unlimited access to achieve my New Year's goal. I found a Skillshare teacher named Felix Harder. He has a six-pack abs masterclass that quickly got me shredded to my socks. Check it out. Wow, man. Hey, wait a minute. You used one of Nicola Blakemore's painting lessons to make that six-pack. You got me. One could say I'm drawn to the arts. Well, not as drawn as I am to Skillshare's super affordable pricing because an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use our link in the description will get a two month free trial. We would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And I'd like to thank you for putting your gut away. Hey, I just rented this film Freaks from you, but I like my titles more in the past tense. Ah, so you'd like Freaked. <gasps> All right, I'll be straight up. Uh, I picked this one because I'd never heard of Freaked until recently, and as soon as I found out about it, I just could not believe I've never heard of this because it's it's a rare movie, uh, only on DVD as far as I know. I haven't found it streaming anywhere. And um, it was apparently it was pulled from distribution mm -hmm. in 93 when it came out because it was so weird. <laughs> yeah, it got slayed by test audiences. Mm -hmm. I think it cost $13 million to make and it only made $30,000. That's not I mean, good. I mean, I don't understand the logic. Like, oh, we already spent all this money for this movie. Let's pull it from theaters. Like, The like, problem is, I think uh, Alex Winters or whatever, because he, he directed this, he acted in it. Oh, it's freaking, Winter, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. A Bill and Ted fame. Yeah. yeah. Everyone thought the test audience is like the teenagers are like, oh, it's uh, a new Bill and Ted or oh. something like that. And when they saw this, they're like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Well, um, so Alex Winter and um, the, the other guys, I forget their names off the top of my head, but they had a show called The Idiot Box, which was like a, a sketch comedy show. Mm. This movie stemmed from that, although at the same time, apparently they were planning it as a horror film first. And then it sort of went in the comedy direction instead. Oh, wow. It was going <laughs> to be called, like, uh, had a longer title originally, like... Mutant freaks or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like like freaked. I'm trying to picture this as like a legit horror film. This is it, it's close because yeah. it's got the effects and everything. But uh, yeah. it, it's weird it, because it's like you have like freaked is a bad name for a movie. I mean, you have freaks from like the 20s yeah, because because that's what a lot of people would think like a oh, freaks 1932 with the Todd Browning f a film. But, yeah, because uh, originally you're like, oh, I want to watch freaked, and I'm like, what's that? And I'm like, that's the movie with the Rastafarian shooting eyeballs. Yeah, oh my god, yeah. the Rastafarian eyeballs. What the movie's about is uh, basically like there's this actor, the celebrity, who goes on a trip to endorse some kind of toxic yeah. chemical. Zygrot 24. Yeah. Zygrot 24, whatever, and it's, it's this toxic chemical that's like yeah. killing people or whatever. From, it's a fertilizer, then, they're trying to say. Made by uh, made by the Everything Except Shoes Company. Yeah. Run by <laughs> yeah. William Sadler, yes. the guy from Die Hard 2 and Bill and Ted's yep. Bogus Journey. It's hard to even like follow and keep track of because so much happens. But anyway, the whole beginning, that whole setup with the toxic chemicals, it's basically just an excuse to get them to this certain where uh, Randy Quaid is like the leader of the circus and he's turning people into these weird creatures. It, it's very and Captain Spaulding, House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, it like, kind of reminds me of Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah, yeah it's a, a little, little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And like, the chemical thing does come back into the plot later, mm -hmm. but it's just... Basically, the beginning is just it just goes from scene to scene until they end up at this like weird circus. It, yeah. it, it, I'm not sure if like a Pat Prof or whoever helped write this, but I'm not. It, it's not quite airplane. It's not quite Naked Gun. It's not quite a. It, it's not quite like a horror film or Dead Alive. It just doesn't make any sense. The, yeah, the, it's a, such a weird movie. The the closest thing I can compare it to is Nothing But Trouble. 
the horrible Dan Aykroyd movie that's kind of like a horror comedy, yeah. but it's mm. terrible. I don't care what anyone says, it's terrible. Ah. This movie's kind of like that, where it's like they put a lot of money in this yeah. and it flopped. Mm. Uh, but this movie's funnier than that. This movie oh. has <laughs> too many jokes, yeah. well, I, but well, the we'll jokes get, are actually good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll I get in the jokes every, soon. Uh, yeah. the, the, yeah. This movie, too, though, I will say, it's one of them movies that you can't do this nowadays. Yeah, there's it's a lot of very, stuff in this movie uh, that wouldn't fly. It's so bizarre, but, um, <laughs> but just to go through the cast really quick like we mentioned Alex Winter um he gets turned into a creature somewhere in the like early in the movie and and his face is just so expressive through yeah, this yeah. like the whole time like he's always making this face like <laughs> and half his face is covered in like this crazy makeup yeah. where his mouth is open almost yeah. the yeah. whole movie. But he goes on acting as if there's nothing weird about him like he he's acting like everything going on around him is so weird so he's yeah. making these weird yeah. faces yeah. meanwhile he's got this weird face going on <laughs> what's, what's funny is before he becomes the monster he's because you know it has to go from this non-redeemable asshole actor guy mm -hmm. into you know becoming good again kind of a thing like mm. I, I guess that's what they were trying to do like make him whole like a yeah. maybe it's like a dr jekyll thing i don't know but because yeah, there's a weird thing like where he's supposed to the, the, the randy quaid guy wants to make him kill all the other freaks yeah it's like what what is that all about yeah i don't understand randy quaid's uh, <laughs> purpose all like his motivations yeah. is other than he's just a crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he plays it uh, good. I mean, he, as far as like a cartoon villain, he's like, not bad. Uh, he kind of acts like he does now in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't really know much about um, him. Oh god, <laughs> don't even. Less said the better. Don't yeah, even, he's going off the deep end. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Keanu Reeves is in this movie. <laughs> I did not know. I had to look that up. Keanu Reeves plays Dog Boy. Yeah. You will yeah, never. Oh yeah. So you will so, never know it. I highly doubt he was even in a lot of the movie. I'm sure there was like a body double for most. Yeah, because I can't tell it's him. Oh, yeah. th th there was a body double for Mr. T. Oh yeah. yeah, so yeah. Mr. T next. So, uh, so Mr. So T who plays the bearded lady. The bearded yeah. lady, which the bearded lady was like a, a, a famous. A very common um, circus Side character, yeah. 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 And um, the, <laughs> there's this part when he meets all the other freaks, and they all like have like their backstories, like oh, these yeah. really quick origins. Yeah. And the origin for the bearded lady, like he shows up to like you know, he shows up to audition for the circus or whatever. Yeah. He comes in and, he's, and he looks exactly the same. He's got the beard and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And Randy Quaid's like, oh okay. You know, you'd be better off without a dick. <laughs> hey, you can keep the beard. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's and like super positive it. and it works out for him, but then he stays there? My yeah. favorite <laughs> that, that's the origin. That's, my that's favorite the origin thing. story in that was the one that's like a hammer yeah. on the floor <laughs> and it just it doesn't say anything, it just fades away and it shows a wrench on a thing and <laughs> Randy Quaid walks over, grabs it, and he's like and puts it away, and then everyone's like crying. They're like, "Man, that's really rough." Dude. <laughs> Wrench turned like, into a hammer. Yeah, like, but, it's like, yeah. and they never have that oh. ever again. The hammer never is in the movie at all. So it's just lame. At, at, at the end of the film with uh, Mr. T, remember they're all in the big cage at the end. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's a body double for most of the time because Mr. T just walked off set. He couldn't deal oh, with it really? anymore. Yeah. He's like, "I can't do this movie anymore," and he was out. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he agree um, to do it in the first place? Yeah. So you also have a uh, Bobcat as the Bobcat the sock Gold. man. Yeah. Yeah. Bobcat. Yeah, gold, I gold know, weight. I love when he tells. I love when he tells his story, and it's real bad. He's like, "I'm not good at telling the story." <laughs> yeah, but he really is just—he's another hand. hand underneath the yeah, sock puppet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in a movie full of all kinds of crazy characters, the, the last one I, I definitely have to mention is is the kid. Um, oh who they God. they keep referring to as a troll for some reason, yeah. but he's just a kid. Is that your ugly little troll? Stewie Clock. <laughs> <laughs> They got this amazing caricature out of him where like they they made like the his he ears has these, bigger. Yeah, he has these really huge ears which are like prosthetics, but yeah. they they made him look into almost like a I don't know, almost like a mad magazine cover or something. Like yeah. he, he looks kind of real, but he's he's just exaggerated. Yeah. And he he's such a good uh he, I, I think he's a good actor in this movie because he just he does what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And I looked him up, I'm like, what else is this guy in? And he's in um apparently uh Hook Huck Finn, 
not a whole lot, but he was yeah, a child. Yeah, did a lot of voice the, work, I think. Yeah, I think in Hook, he was, he was just one of the Lost Boys. He wasn't like one of the special ones. He wasn't Donuts. He wasn't Thud. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, he, he was just one of them. Yeah. He wasn't Rufio. His whole scene where he's going to like uh, magazines and news. Yes, okay. It, it made me real nostalgic because the only one who believes um, the story is the Weekly World. And I remember reading the <laughs> Weekly World all I, the time. I have time. a big book of just like a, a, a like an archival book yeah. of them. I, I love that. Uh, I, <laughs> where he gets thrown through a glass yeah, uh, door like, <laughs> and it happens again and again and then on the last one when they're like oh yeah we'll publish your story hey show show the kid the way out and he's like I know the way out and then he jumps he through the door and, through. And, <laughs> and by he you mean the small woman that's playing him no oh. no you see the the person who's playing him earlier in the film when when he's getting is that I, Deep Roy yeah it's, yeah it's Deep Roy so that was him jumping through the window they threw him through the glass and he got cut so bad they had to like emergency room because he was oh, gonna oh my die. god really because like even though the glass oh my is fake god. Yeah, yeah. even though it's like sugar glass stuff it's still like punctured Whoa. so they had to get Deep Roy to the Oh my, oh my god, Deep gosh. Roy was in deep, deep trouble. It's, it's weird to think you watch something yeah. on screen, you're watching a movie, and you're like laughing like hysterically at how funny this gag is, not knowing somebody actually like <laughs> yeah. injured themselves. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you know, like doing research for this I episode, did not know that. I was like, oh, Deep Roy's in this. I was looking up interviews with him about the movie, and he was like, oh, I got hurt really, really bad. I've never heard of this movie, mm -hmm. watched it through, and I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. And that's why I picked it. I've only seen the ending, and for years I thought this was the ending of Howling Six, because that mm. takes place in a freak show mm -hmm. but i watched howling six a few years ago and I'm, i got to the ending i'm like wait where's the big monster fight what what is this so i i thought i just made this movie up until last night when i'm watching wow. it i'm like i'm like this is the movie this is what i remember Dude, that's always cool when that happens yeah. uh, let's talk about the effects oh yeah the effects in this movie yeah. are amazing yeah they're great so right from the opening credit scene mm -hmm. um which like, is ridiculous yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. everything I, in that animation in the credit scene is it, it reminded me kind of like how i felt about the end credits of uh Harry and the Hendersons. Oh yeah, where that blew my mind. Oh yeah, more yeah, than yeah. The actual movie, <laughs> but did, this kind of. I still have never seen anything like this opening credit sequence. Like yeah. it, it's some kind of animation, I guess. Yeah, it's like claymation. Yeah. I guess it's claymation, but it's also this weird collagey sort of like. And they yeah. smear. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've never seen a lot of that in like MTV music videos back then. Mm -hmm. Which this movie is very. This MTV. is like kind of like um, the movie Peter Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From yeah. Sledgehammer. Yeah. 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 Oh, big Probably time. Probably my yeah. favorite music yeah. video. Really. Oh yeah, me too. I love. It's the, a really good one. Yeah, both of those. Yeah, a guy named Screaming Mad George, who's who, one of the effects. Who guys. directed mm -hmm. The Giver? Oh, good. Did the effects for. Like amongst many things, he did the effects for Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, he's great. Good. Yeah. He did a uh, Predator. Ooh. He did a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, three and four. He did Bride of Reanimator. Mm -hmm. Oh, which um, I just watched the other night. I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, which he's just one of many effects artists apparently because mm -hmm. they they had to just like rush like get all these different uh, yeah. people together to work on mm -hmm. it. And the result is some of the most amazing practical effects I've ever seen and, actually. And, and because it's like. Airplane, like it's 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 super parody comedy. Yeah. Like for example, he uses his computer mouse is an actual. Oh mouse. yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. was really that was good. good. See, there's, there's so many little details. I don't even notice a lot of things because you have to see it more than once. I like to pick um, up. the the super environmental feminist with the douchey guy that they get combined. But like um. When it's them, it's like sometimes it's the actor with a prosthetic head and then they switch. It's gross and fun and ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And it's definitely early MTV, middle Nickelodeon. Like, yeah. it, it's yeah. kind of like, perfect. I, like I said, this is either like MTV or like 19, early 90s, the movie. This um, entire basically, thing is like, like for some reason, when I look at this movie, I think of Primus. I think of yeah. Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. It's yeah. everything 90s just comes to what, your mind. What, what sucks is MTV um, Studios or their movie wing didn't really start yet mm. um, until like Joe's apartment, Beavis and Butthead, mm. Harry at the Spy. And... Harry at the Spy. No, that was Nickelodeon. Oh, that was Nickelodeon. They were still Nickelodeon. Paramount um, yeah. by the Olympics. Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it was kind of all that. Um, and it sucks that this movie didn't really get a chance mm -hmm. and it never will because this can't be made that's, nowadays. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, um, even this movie, you'd think it would get like a cult following after all this time and it still hasn't. Oh, no. It's like, People get confused. Like, a cult movie isn't like. Big Trouble in Little China, like, like, like mm -hmm. they always put the name cult on these things. This is literally a yeah. cult movie. Yeah, you know yeah. what? This is cult because the only, p it's very few people. Uh, We're the cult. Well, I yeah. guess we are. Yeah, yeah no, we're honestly, part of it. are you are you the cult too? The freak yeah. to yeah. cult. <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies that we've watched for this, mm. and I've never like going into yeah. it not knowing what the hell I was like going into at all. Yeah, I love this damn movie. It's, Me too. It, yeah, it's, it's one of those things like it, it. It's very nostalgic to watch it. 
because yeah. it is so just retro. It, yeah. and it took me a minute I, to get into it because the beginning, like the first ten minutes, it's just joke, 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 yeah. joke, and I'm like, slow down, slow down, yeah, slow down. I, I can't, it's funny can't, jokes, but it was just too much at once. And then once they get to like Randy Quaid, the movie starts yeah. to slow down a little bit. I'm like, all right. Now I can now I can enjoy these jokes. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, let's the, talk about the humor because yeah. that's the one thing we it's, didn't get. It's you know, really goofy. Like the uh, the mm. plane crash part is so messed. Oh up. my god, okay. my really favorite funny. goddamn joke. Yeah, yeah like, so oh, glad we weren't in okay. that plane. Just to explain it in case <laughs> for everyone who hasn't hasn't seen it. Uh, they're they're like landing in uh, South America or somewhere. Yeah. San Juan. And, San Juan. Oh, San Juan. Yeah. And you see the, the plane landing, of- and you, you you hear their voiceover over the plane landing, and then the plane just explodes for no reason, and then it cuts to them outside the plane, like glad that wasn't our plane. <laughs> sure, glad that wasn't our plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then a piece of like. The fuselage or whatever falls behind them. It's, like, yeah. it's like landing yeah. gear. <laughs> also on the plane, I like when they throw the kid out the airlock yeah. and then randomly a guy in a wheelchair falls out. Oh my and, God. Then, yeah. and then the follow-up, it reminded me of Twilight Zone, the movie again, where yeah, they yeah. open it up and it's the kid. Yeah. Which they're probably making reference to. Yeah. Uh, and that means it, I'm going to put that kid in Twilight Zone, the movie now. Yeah. Basically, the whole movie has this like crazy like Mel Brooks naked gun type yeah. of humor mm-hmm. where you don't really know what's going to happen it's it's unpredictable and then just random things will happen like Gumby all of a sudden appears uh, jerking off while yeah. giving, giving the finger <laughs> and wasn't he like having sex with Pokey for so, a or Pokey's like, watching yeah, him yeah they were like oh, I'm sorry sorry characters who look like Gumby yeah, and Pokey were not, who were not it was Gumby had. it was Gumby well that's, that's a <laughs> oh weird... god the lawyers are like, well, that's, the thing, like, like that's why it's so shocking because you know that they couldn't have gotten permission to have Gumby yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that's a, that, that's a weird scene because he, like he lifts up the shirt of the guy and the girl, and he's gonna just you know Siamese them together basically. So you expect them to go like like just kind of fuse, very like the thing kind of style. Yeah. But instead, they turn into a ball of goop that turns into jerk off Gumby. Yeah. And it's At like, first, yeah. it turns into like a, like a weird owl style like yeah. dinosaur from like the mm-hmm. Jurassic Park. Yes, movie. and then it turns into the Cyclops from uh, Seventh Voyage of Simba. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, so they're big fans of you know claymation and stuff, mm-hmm. stop motion, Ray so and stuff. they're probably paying tribute to Harryhausen and as soon as you get that in your head before you can even complete that thought all of a sudden Gumby's jerking off on the <laughs> yeah. finger, and you're just like what the fuck is going on Knock with it out, you <laughs> the one effect and this kind of makes me happy that there wasn't an X-Men movie in the 90s because the frog band reminds oh, me yeah. of Toad I'm like, oh man! If X Men came out a few years later, like earlier, Toad would have yeah. been like this. It would have been I all that one part where they just show him like, a, it's when they're tunneling. Which I love that scene with yeah. the tunneling underneath, and it has like the yeah. upstairs and the downstairs. Yeah. But they're like inside, and he just he the snatches helicopter. an entire like plane out of the air. Yeah, and, and I don't like, think that was CGI. I think they did a claymation effect and yeah, put it, it was over really him. good. It, like, it's yeah. weird. Like yeah, so you had him eating the plane, but so so he was the frog. But then there was also a frog man that was just a guy in a that diving was just suit. A, yeah, the frog. Yeah, it's just a guy in a frog. <laughs> Oh yeah, but and at the end when the frog man gets turned back into normal, he's just a Frenchman. Did we gotta go through. Can we we, just gotta, go we through? gotta go through all the, all the all the funniest gags and the worst yeah, gags. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the part so, that made me laugh okay. really hard was the part where they turn on the machine. Yeah. And it's making that like siren noise, and then it's uh the guy's watching TV and everything, and he doesn't hear them doing anything, and then he's like, no more scripts, and he knocks over a, a styrofoam cup. <laughs> that hits the ground, and the doctor all of a sudden like hears that, and he's like, "What? A styrofoam cup?" Yeah, and then he crushes. He's this like, is not yeah. environmentally <laughs> friendly. Yeah. <laughs> It was um, pretty good. How about the uh, the Kim Basinger turd uh, gag? Oh, you know? yeah. Basically, okay, he's in the outhouse, and he has to steal the milkman's costume or whatever. And then <laughs> and he basically, to get the milkman to come into the outhouse, he says, hey, I'm... I'm taking a shit right now, and this this shit, it looks just like Kim Basinger naked, and the milkman's like, oh, I gotta check this out. He wants to see a turd. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, and, and, like, and then he takes the milkman's outfit, and then it turns out the rest of them all did the exact same things. So yeah. There's like 30 milkmen. The, the, the turd joke wasn't too funny for me, except for the, that doesn't look like Kim Basinger, maybe Winona Ryder. Yeah. But but then like the milk, when they're all dressed as milkman, it's great, because the Randy Quaid's looking at him, he's like, it's a lot of milk, man. It's like, yeah, one of them is a cow. Yeah. How do you not know? And then but, he's like, no wonder they're fighting. Wasn't there a, a club joke? Like, you know, the anti-theft card? On the device? boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what what happened there? I don't even remember. And, he, uh, he's trying to find ways to escape. 
and so he goes to like this car that doesn't work or it's locked or whatever and then he goes to a boat and there's the club's on it because <laughs> the club was like in they yeah, made a joke at the time who doesn't the, know yeah, what yeah, the club it, is because... in like the early 90s I guess like there was every com- every other commercial was the club and it's yeah. this this basically this it's this club you put it on your steering wheel your car mm-hmm. and it locks the wheel so people can't steal the car yeah, I feel like everyone they, they eventually found out all you have to do is just saw through the oh. steering wheel and just lift it right out because people are like, look, you can... You're gonna scrap the car anyway. Most people who steal it, so they <laughs> you're like just hacksaw through the steering wheel, it, move it, and then mm. scrap the whole car. Anyway. It is funny because like I knew so many people who had the club growing up, and then it's one of those things where like, oh yeah, that just there's disappeared. A, there's yeah, a guy totally on did, my yeah. block who still who has, has the club. Oh, I really? was walking past wow. the car, and I'm like, holy shit! Except no imitation. Make sure the anti theft device you buy says the club on the handle. How about the outhouse that's larger when you go inside? Yeah, oh, because you know of what? Bob Vila. And it's a good like practical thing. effect. Like yeah. you see, like they kind of built the exterior and then they walk in and it's just like this large room. Yeah. And he's like, oh, how'd you make it? Or no, he says like good use of the space. Yeah. And then this like home improvement guy, Bob, yeah. Bob Vila. It's a, yeah. not and I, the real Bob Vila, but it's, it's yeah. a little like Bob Vila. Well, I guess it's basically like in Gremlins 2 when they're making fun of Julia Child and yes. they have like a look like, it's yeah. kind of like that where yeah. the, the, apparently, so there's this home improvement guy, what do you yeah. Like PBS or something? Yeah, um, it, yeah. it was uh, um, um, this old house. And he was on, okay. uh, he was on Home Improvement. He used to yeah. go. He used to butt heads with Tim. Tim. Oh, yeah. okay. my, um, my so he comes on and then he starts like talking about like, oh well, if you you, you uh, like, I don't know. He's like going into detail about how we like made the thing large or whatever. And then he just like he's like, thanks, Bob, and just bashes yes, him on the head, bashes then, him with the hammer, <laughs> yeah. and he's just like that. Actually, like, got it's me hard hit. Too. That whole yeah. scene got me super nostalgic. My, my babysitter used to watch nothing but Home Improvement shows. Oh, so I grew okay. up watching a lot of Bob Vila. Mm. A lot of Christopher Lowe, and I'm like, uh-huh. man, no one, oh, no one else, Lowell. no one would else would ever get this joke now. But for me, I'm like, oh, that's well, really, that's, that's a really good joke. That's for me. a problem with Freaked the entire thing. There is, is it, a lot of dated stuff. It's such yeah. a minefield of good, bad, Which, confusing yeah, jokes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the best way. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, to if, put if, it. It's so like if you told anybody like under the age of twenty. Five to probably watch this movie. Yeah. Most of it's going to go twenty five. Yeah, like, and even you think then, so? I mean, they're, I'm thirty one. Like, so yeah. I'm not even thirty, and I got <laughs> most of the jokes. <laughs> even then, old. they're making like they make a joke to like an old political campaign ad. I like Ike. Oh, the way yeah. like Ike for that guy Eisenhower. is just always wearing. And, and he like, always has the sign in his hand. Yeah, it's like weird that like, they're going back to something. Like I'm like, what's the joke here? I don't even understand. Like, what are they yeah. trying to like say? <laughs> but it's that's what makes the movie so funny. Is that there's this this awkwardness that just yeah. runs through the whole thing. Um, kind of like if you're watching a like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, where like you still it holds up and everything's funny, mm-hmm. but every now and then there's one of these like really old dated jokes where you're just yeah. like, what was that about? Like yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a part where he's like, oh, we, uh, you're not supposed to have those chemicals. He's like, well, I'm not supposed to have this either. And he holds up two towels from the Ramada. From the Ramada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's his big uh, evil. Like, yeah, 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 he sold like towels from the too. Ramada. Like, they're like, oh. Yeah. Then there's this guy, Professor Nigel Crump from Oxford University. Oh, yeah. And they just put the subtitle up no matter where he is in the scene. (laughs) Yeah. Like, he'll be in the crowd in the background, and they have, like, arrows pointing to him. And you're like, what's the joke here? I don't even know what they're trying to say. He's this this Oxford, like, professor in this movie kind of thing. There's a lot of little repeating jokes that don't have a payoff, but they keep doing them. So you're like, okay, this is fine. (laughs) Okay, last one that I I got is the, the clown who's like, has a sign that says, I will fart your weight. And then he's like, I bet you weigh 107 pounds. Okay. And then he gets his like megaphone and he goes, one, two. Yeah. And you're like, what, what is he doing? Is he going to fart the number 107? <laughs> that, that whole scene's weird because it's like the freak show, br- it brings in everyone much like the the bar in from Dust That's what I was thinking. Yeah, everyone saw, starts yeah. like shooting in the air and going nuts. And then uh, Randy Quaid's like, Everyone, please sit down. And everyone just like, whoosh. and it's definitely reversed. Like that footage is reversed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you look in that scene, sometimes the floor is perfectly clean, and sometimes it's completely dirty. Like there's <laughs> yeah. so many takes they did. Oh. Best gag, you know what I mean? I, this movie's from '93. I don't know if it's a spoiler or whatever. Mm. But the closing gag, when the whole time the character's telling the story, <laughs> he's like silhouetted like those like uh, you know yeah. crime victims, like where they have the yeah. the, the, the shadow. 
And it, and you, you see him like deformed. He has like this like something coming out of the side of his head, which yeah. is the way he looks in, in the story. The movie, yeah. yeah. But at <laughs> the end, when they turn the lights on, he's perfectly normal. But there's like a cactus. Yeah, behind a cactus. Him. that was actually the the payoff yeah. at the end of the movie yeah. was actually my favorite part of everything. Like building up to that, yeah. and then it's still it's so good because um, you're like, oh, the stuff's gonna it's gonna fix you. And yeah, you're like, oh, he's that's not fixed. They, and they're so, like, <laughs> yeah. So they find out that there's uh, macaroons yeah. are what save you. He baked the cure for the for the, the deformities into macaroons and they happen to just already have eaten them anyway. Yeah, except for the uh, worm. Yeah, except for the worm who he in the scene he goes, oh I hate macaroons and then later on everybody's coming out onto the stage and everybody's all normal except the worm is yeah. still. Or Ortiz. Ortiz still. Yeah. Oh he yeah, was well, Ortiz because he ran away for the squirrel the whole time. <laughs> And then he's just like, oh, just because I don't like macarons. I felt, I felt bad for the worm. I just felt bad for that actor because yeah. he seemed like a good actor. And, and he, his whole thing is like, he's like, would you? He's like, I don't know how to thank you. And he's like, would you wipe my ass for me? Because no one can wipe like, his uh, ass because uh, he can't reach yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anything? Any last words on freaks? I think. Oh, well, there was. Uh, remember, there was a freaks theme song in the middle of the movie. Oh right. Where it's kind of like a stand bush. Where it's like freaks. Buddha, That's right. And he's like, turn that music calls. down, and they have to like, and it's actually they're just playing it on the radio. Like, there's you see too that, much. That gag always. There's too much me. going on. There is too much in this movie to even <laughs> remember. Like, I I watched it twice now. Yeah. And. Even the second time, I was like, "Wow, I don't even think I'm." I yeah, uh, no, I'm definitely watching this again yeah, later on. I gotta show it to my friends. That, that's, that's, like, yeah. that, it's kind of the problem with this movie, and probably our review, is mm. when you think about it, you don't think about it as a movie. You're like, "This happened, and then this happened, yeah. and this happened, yeah. and then yeah. that happened." Oh, don't remember that because there's too much going yeah. on. Yeah, I'd say you know. Sit down with a couple of drinks. Yeah. Try to make it through the first it's ten short. minutes. It's only like an hour. And oh yeah, 10 yeah. It's hour twenty. Like yeah. Hour just, 20. Okay. Oh, and it goes by even faster. Yeah. Than just that. tough yeah. it out past that first ten minutes because yeah. then it, it it gets better paced. Oh yeah, it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, especially by the end, it ends on like really high energy where yeah. there's these these tone shifts where it like almost gets into like like it's romantic for a moment, and then all of a sudden, rah, like a monster comes up, yeah. and it, it just has all these like stop yeah. and starts, and you're just. At, as soon as the credits come, it's it's like, wow! Like what? Yeah. What did I just see? <laughs> uh, I highly recommend it. It, it. Totally underrated. Don't know why uh, more people don't talk about this movie because this is really out there. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for checking out Cinemassacre Rental Reviews. Take a look at our other videos, and if you want to get some sweet Cinemassacre merchandise, head on over to store.screenwavemedia.com.